What up traders, what up investors, Ken here from Dyslexic Investor and thank you for tuning in for another fantastic video. Today we're going to be talking about a slew of different various stocks that ARK is uh, invested in, looking to put money into. And again, if you're not familiar with Kathy Wood and ARK Investment, they are a uh, a fund that runs multiple ETFs within everything from innovation to genomics to basically the, the future of things. Um, across multitude of different variances in the sense of different sections from 3D printing to pharmaceuticals to payments to all kinds of stuff. So we're going to be looking through, again, I think it's like 12 to 15 stocks. Uh, they put out a newsletter on a weekly basis kind of highlighting some stocks, looking at some particular news or findings that they could find that could that moved it this week and looking for the potential outlook from that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into that. Before we go into that, I wanted to talk about Tastyworks. So Tastyworks is the uh, broker that I use for trading my options, stock, and potentially cryptos uh, in the near future. Uh, affiliate link down below. Again, you can get up, you can get 10 call options or you can get 10 or 100 shares. So that sounds pretty fantastic for, again, opening account of nearly $2,000 or more. So that's a great little thing there. And second is going to be Audible. As you know, you are watching The Dyslexic Investor. I have trouble reading, so I use Audible to help me stay up to date with all the fantastic books uh, and just really a great quality product that I've been using literally probably for a decade. With that being said, what book am I currently reading? I am reading one of my favorite uh, fund managers, Peter Lynch. Completely easy, basic book in the sense of really short uh, listen or read depending on how you uh, to consume uh, books uh, but very simple I like to listen to this book at the beginning of the year to kind of help me uh, uh, gauge and really put my uh, goals and uh, market out uh, expectations into check and again Peter is a fantastic very uh, intelligent investor in the sense of really kind of dumbing things down and just keeping things really simple with some very uh, simplistic rules so definitely check that out and again both those links are down in the description below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into what Kathy and ARK Investments saying about a handful of stocks. Let's go. All right, so what we're going to be looking at is, of course, ARK Investment stuff. So this is, again, this is their main site. There is so much research here. They're very transparent and very open and sharing various things from white papers, webinars, videos, and so forth, newsletters. They put up uh, podcasts, all kinds of stuff. And they really are, again, open source way of like, hey, this is how, what we're looking at, this is what we're looking to buy, da da da, and so forth. But you can subscribe to multiple different newsletters and this is how I acquired this one. So this is again, we're gonna be looking at a multitude of stocks here, you can kind of see here again, we are gonna be talking about a, uh, basically a drop or a move of 15% in a day during the course of the last week. Um, we hope this commentary is useful. This is from ARK Investment. In addition, whenever the market appears to be in a state of heightened volatility, we like to post a video which is which I provide a review of the dynamic play. Please look at uh, what Kathy knows here. So we can go uh, and check that out as well. Of course, everyone I think loves uh, to talk about uh, Kathy Wood, and we can kind of analyze that video as well uh, throughout this video. It's going to be a little bit longer, so just be uh, heads up on that, and we can kind of uh, uh, stay tuned in the sense of that. So let's go ahead and just jump into the tickers here, and then we'll probably listen to the video towards the tail end, or actually, should we listen to the video initially because it's a 36 minute video? Um, but basically, uh, you can see here on the out sense of like uh, the market views, uh, Kathy weighs in the impact of the Senate elections, upcoming things. Definitely, we'll definitely check out this video. Again, very strong insights. You have to understand that, hey, Kathy, she has a much longer view in the market. So it's not like she's just day trading uh, stocks. They Yes, their overall ETFs and they invest in are very uh, trading driven, um, but they are really looking for innovations and looking for the longer swing trades to longer term investments, not just buying a stock one day because it's up or down 15, 20% and then selling the next day once it pops 5%. That's, that's not really their cup of tea. Um, with that being said, let's just go ahead and just jump into the stocks here, which we've talked about here. So we're going to looking basically at FL 
are. Again, that's going to be again going from the straight list here. Let's go ahead and get the chart set up here on the daily side. So we're going to look at FLIR of Gorn. This is as uh, they said uh, they announced they were, uh, acquired the company for eight billion dollars in cash. The Telenid is both Telenid and FLIR system manufactures electronic managed sensors. Each are different markets using semiconductor technologies. So, of course, this again, you can see on that news that we had again, normally when something gets acquired or moved up, there's usually a kind of a weird skew of things. You can see that huge jump higher here um, and jumping into that $51 range. Um, that is, again, also a key Fibonacci level here. And then looking for potentially uh, to hold this as a base, maybe let the moving averages kind of catch up here um, and look to, to continue to trade higher. Um, but looking for initial support down here around 45 short-term support is going to be coming around 50 to 49 dollars again where the 8 ema lies and as well with a large move higher like this potentially looking to kind of just trade sideways and kind of waiting for further announcements on that um the next one is going to be skills it has jumped up 20 percent on tuesday and the response to increased investors um in esports okay and so if you're not familiar with this one this has been <laughs> a crazy one as well uh really popping off on uh this a tuesday you can see here on that large green candle here this one is still actually a very interesting one um looking for again this was a spac uh again most spacs as you know have started at ten dollars and they kind of just bounce around a little bit um and they kind of in, unless they get a large announcement as you can see here look at that volume coming in there that's when they announced uh the acquisition or what company they're acquiring and then you can kind of see that volatility kind of shake out um, throughout the past couple months. And then, of course, a huge rip higher here and looking for this to continue going higher. Um, the reason why I like this trend is we're seeing the 21 EMA really hold uh, and the 34 coming down for some initial support. And then looking for potentially staying above at least 19 to 1897 and looking to potentially break a back above 24. The, with the real targets, we're going to be looking for 28 to 33 dollars for SK. ALZ. Um, and next one, we're going to be looking at FATE, FATE, uh, Fate Therapeutics. Again, this is a biopharmaceutical company that produces an allergenic uh, immune, blah, 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 uh, introduced a stem cell, blah, 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 all scientific stuff. Um, they're announcing a $350 million secondary offering. Um, and their view is that uh, Fate's uh, recent outperformance seems that the data is presenting to the Heart Association of blah, blah, blah. Several weeks ago, the company presented early but compelling evidence that their FT516 and FT596 uh, targeted the basically I and key cells that could uh, uh, administrate safely in multiple doses could uh, compound to clinical benefits. Though early, it's the data could uh, validate fate's uh, basically their uh, platform within time. Of course, knowing and understanding these uh, therapeutical and pharmaceutical stocks, they are very much uh, driven on the sense of uh, the fate of studies, research, and so forth. So earnings do move it, but it's usually, you can see here, it has multiple green up days. This is much, much where they must have gone to show at the uh, American Association of, uh, or the a ASH, um, and looking for this to continue grand higher. Huge move higher. We're seeing that a lot of volume come in here. And as well with this kind of squeeze here, we saw this pop off as well. This thing is definitely looking to try to potentially break about above the 120 level, but this is going to be very heavily driven on news. So God forbid if there's anything that goes negative or some their trials or something's not proven, this thing can easily correct and correct really fast and come back substantially down. Initially looking for some support around the 21 EMA, which is it can be around 93 to $94. So be uh, super mindful of that one. So we're going to be putting those alerts there as well. Um, next one is B I it was sorry H sorry N I U. Uh, this is a it moved up more than fifty percent on Thursday after reporting the sales of its e scooters grew forty nine points forty nine sorry forty point nine percent year over year on the cost basis quarter, highlighting the combination of adoption of electric scooters product line, especially in China. 
So we're talking electric scooters. This is not your Razor scooters back in the early 2000s and late 90s. These are these electric scooters that, again, really trying to transform uh, the uh, going from short distances here. As you can see here, we had a squeeze here. It did fire long, looking for some initial overhead pressure around 3650, uh, which we've seen multiple times kind of being flagged as a potential overhead resistance. With this one, uh, a little bit not as beautiful a trend as we looked at the previous ones, um, looking for potentially a little bit of consolidation here. With the huge move higher on this news announcement, we're really looking again to potentially kind of settle off here, maybe wait for the moving averages to kind of catch up here and kind of, uh, kind of come back down to earth on this particular news. Um, next, we're gonna be looking at ONVO. Again, this is a company that's focused on 3T, 3D bioprinting, traded up nearly 17% on Wednesday on possible uh, investors and speculatives on uh, gaining confidence in its ability to maxim maximize its 3D bioprinting assets to deliver on uh, uh, commercial strategies. We, uh, again, this is from ARK Investments, ARK Investment saying, we believe shares will be volatile until uh, ONVL uh, revol reveals some of its more uh, path forward. Again, basically, ARK Investments saying, hey, this is choppy AF as you can see here, um, and really looking for this to, again, they really are saying, they're being very upfront about like, hey, we need to see more stuff. Like we we believe in them, but we just need to see a little bit more results to kind of come through here. And that chart really just screams chop kangaroo market here. And again, very much like a typical, very early stage, uh, proven new concept with any kind of pharmaceutical or therapeutic uh, devices. With that being said here, Crazy move swings high. Not really my favorite cup of tea or coffee here, but this is definitely something to, to look out for and be a little bit speculative about. You can see here a lot of topping patterns. If it breaks above this like uh, 1591, which is a key Fibonacci level, we've seen it kind of stall out here, but with the overall all-time highs above 18, this is definitely gonna be looking out as well. But if this does get moving and we get some more fantastic news and uh, pathways, we're gonna be looking for initially some targets around 22 to $26. Um, next is going to be the old workhorse, of course, <laughs> WKHS. Of course, workhorse has been in the news quite a bit on getting that movement on that UPS, USPS contract. Again, this thing has been a roller coaster ride without a doubt. Um, so their commentary from ARK Investments, so let me just actually slide this over to kind of uh, justify this a little more. So, um, it moved more than 60% on Thursday in the tandem with other electronic uh, vehicle stocks. The EV industry is enjoying strong strong share gains against its initial combination uh, um, industrial combustion parts, again, ICE motors, uh, that could gain more momentum on the Democrats having majorities in both houses in the Senate. Of course, uh, insinuating that we could see... Um, new policies but putting forth like if you're if you're not familiar with it like china has a uh, a rule or like a not something set in stone but probably is the set in stone with china in the sense of like out of the 100 percent of car sales in a year i think 15 to 20 percent have to be within the ev category to kind of really show mass adoption to the EV trend here. Of course, Workhorse uh, been very popular, uh, but we're looking for an initial topping pattern between $28 and $30. That's pretty clear on the chart on the chop that we're seeing here. We are somewhat in a squeeze. We did fire long, but really looking at this at a longer term time frame, I kind of like it on the longer term time frame. So that's going to take a little bit more uh, patience here. That 21 EMA on the weekly chart, which is around 20 bucks, has been a pretty nice little zone to get into the stock. And this is actually where I acquired just a little bit, but we can kind of see here with the parabolic SER dots, it really needs to get above $28 to get any kind of movement. This is just kind of noise and chop between that uh, 20 to 26 dollar level um, next one is going to be ntla uh, it's a crispr based genomic editing company that focuses on geno editing and closing up 16 percent on thursday and providing an update on its pipeline ahead of the jp morgan health conference next week this year the company plans to submit two two new drugs i and d applications to fda blah 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 blah, blah, blah um, to, uh, to treat this so CRISPR, if you're not, no, that's basically what they used for gene editing. So let's look 
go ahead and look at ntla stock of course look at this beautiful run this is fantastic holy moly guacamole really looking for the again these pharmaceutical stocks they are in love this is a beautiful stairway higher my only concern is if things don't go uh, approval of the fda which again god forbid that they're whatever i have my own opinions about the fda but that being said if things don't get approved this thing could be a elevator down but as of speaking here, we have some short-term support basically around 67 and then some longer data support around 58 to $57, kind of with the 21 EMA. But you can kind of see here, this has been very much a momentum-driven stock, um, not as aggressive as like a Tesla as of right now, but it is holding that above the 21 EMA and looking to continually uh, trend higher here. Um, next one, we're going to be looking at... Pacific Bioscience of California. This is a PACA um, surged 16% on Thursday on its tandem with a brand that rally in the healthcare stocks ahead of the JP Morgan Health Conference on the 11th to 14th. So that's noted. Uh, typically, companies give business updates and make important announcements on the JP Morgan Health Conference. All right, that's good to know. So again. Could be a trade, could be selling some premium on this one. So we're gonna be looking at PACB. Um, again, looks just like the chart we just looked at uh, with uh, NTLA. Beautiful looking stock, looking like it's definitely a uh, a momentum trade, a very FOMO trade into that health conference, you know, anticipating and speculating on some kind of uh, ideas going forth. Um, next, we're going to be looking at the, this is a CRISPR therapeutics. So CRISPR therapeutics, again, really highlighting that ARC believes CRISPR's performance this quarter resulted in the uh, encouraging data presented on st stickle cell research and based um, from, again, from the December move. Um, ARC has been a pretty large uh, uh, competitor, or not competitor, uh, believer in a lot of the early stage CRISPR genomic stuff. As you can see here with CRISPR, again, really kind of that same move. We're seeing that 21 EMA hold very well. Looking for some initial resistance here around 197 here. But if this thing can continue to run and we can stay above basically 160 to 150 and that trend can carry us higher, we're looking for 271. I know that seems completely insane, but that is something that we could be looking for. We could be looking at some other short data targets. Let me just highlight these. Oh, why this not? There we go. Looking at this here, we can draw a fib all the way down here. Wow, this thing was $32. Um, looking for $258 to $321. So that's going to be from the fibs of current highs to lows for the year. Um, this is what we're going to be looking at for this one. Um, next one, we're going to be looking at uh, AQB. Of course, this one has come up quite a bit. This company uh, uh, appealing modern genomics to advance aquatic production, uh, agriculture uh, production. Basically, again, farming is the new hot item because, again, uh, doing to help produce food in low or hard climates. I believe agriculture stuff and making stuff grow faster, not just throwing, sprinkling some pixie dust on it and making it uh, the same and 10 times bigger, but uh, actually making it healthy. So AQB, this is again, another interesting chart to look at again. This thing I believe was, uh, yeah, penny, almost a dollar stock just a couple months ago. But this thing really coming in, basically having some overall uh, resistance around the $11 range um, and not really getting uh, that enough oomph to go higher here. But again, this thing has jumped quite substantially here, really having some issues trying to stay above 10. Um, you're seeing that we did break the parabolic SCR dots on the daily chart here so that's a good key sign but we're looking to kind of continue to stay above 850 even above 775 or eight dollars the trend is still much intact again a little bit more of a momentum again once this gets more eyes and more views and more analysts actually look at it this thing could potentially go higher as well so interesting one without a doubt um, next one we're going to be looking at is rp TX. Okay, and this is a precision octum company that focuses on uh, a lot of big words here. Um, participating companies will discover platforms using CRISPR based screening to find specific synthetic lethal gene pairs. Um, okay, so very scientific stuff. Let's go ahead and look at the chart here. Uh, R, oops, RPTX. 
Interesting stock. This looks like it hasn't been around very much. Again, it came public here around 32, slumped back down, a little bit of choppy here, looking for some resistance again, or some support down to this level around 36 to 3580 here. Um, looking for, again, huge breakout again on that news that we saw uh, on Thursday and looking to continuing higher. So we can kind of look at some potential moves from this FIB here, from the swing high to swing low. Again, a little bit mindful here. We're going to be going here. And then we're also going to be going to this pattern here to kind of do some crisscrossing movements. And we're seeing uh, some lines kind of line up here. I know this seems a little bit crazy, but this is what I do on this movement. Again, looking for some initial uh, overhead targets around 53 and then real targets around 60. So that's going to be an interesting uh, play to look at um, and really looking to see this uh, potentially pop higher on some fantastic news. So, yeah. Fantastic. Um, next one, we're going to be looking at ARCT. This is a close up on the COVID stuff. Um, basically, this is a the, using the Pfizer and Moderna creative announcement, the T cell uh, with it again, very much driven on the biopharmaceutical stuff and really looking for again the 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 moves of the vaccine and the antibodies that are created within the COVID stuff. I'm not going to pretend like I know what the hell I'm talking about, but we can go ahead and look at the stock. Of course, with uh, the news that we saw, a huge gap down. I don't know why they highlighted that, but then a couple days later, it just kicked back higher because the study, I believe they they I looked this one up, and again, I think a friend, my friend Dave, also pointed out to me that. Um, the data wasn't correct, uh, and it was basically spoofed, uh, and the, the the findings weren't false, and now we're seeing that kind of kind of come into correction. So initially looking for some targets around ninety one dollars if it does get back up and moving from those levels. On uh, now we got a pretty multitude of different ones. This is all within the three D printing space. So again, I think a lot of people know NNDM and X One. Uh, basically, these are all just uh, the turbocharging of the three D printing stocks. Again, these are not your three D printers that you just print those little uh, plastic trinkets at home and sit on your corner of your desk to like uh, to let to collect dust. Um, these are basically more or less in tune for uh, uh, enterprise and really for large scale operations. So the first one we're looking at SSSY, SY. of course, like this is absolutely insane seeing this crazy growth going here, really much just getting a lot of eyeballs and lots of day traders on this, potentially looking to, uh, to peter out here um, to see this volume to, to, to trade lower here. Um, again, looking for some initial targets, really trying to get it back above 30. Those are going to be some key levels that are going to be looking at to potentially see uh, that move there. So let's go ahead and jump into the next one, which is going to be X1. This is one I think a lot of people do know, a um, little bit more than others. Again, NNDM is probably the one that folks know the most. Um, with this one, we're going to be really looking at the fibs here from the swing high to swing low here over the last year. We're seeing, again, a lot of resistance at that $14 level, which is the 78.6 percentile move, uh, which we're seeing it fail. Um, initial support around 11 to be precise, $11.79 to $12. But that being said, this is looking like a pretty nice potentially uptrend here, but we need to see uh, uh, more of an oomph. Again, we do have the volume, we do have the momentum, so I'm looking to potentially see up to $14 to $16 for this one. This is definitely one uh, I want to be looking at in the short term for a potential trade. And next one is MTLS. Again, very high, very, very aggressive moves here. We talked about this one on, I think, the Sunday live stream here. Really seeing this one very aggressive again with the overall movements that we're seeing here. We had some initial targets around 38 for support, but now this has been ramped up substantially higher due to the fact of the momentum that we're seeing in the 3D printing space. This one, again, very choppy. It does come down, and if it does pull back, it pulls back pretty aggressively. So the first short-term support we're going to be looking at is $60, again, where the 8 EMA lies, and then down to the $55 level, which is in the 21 and the parabolic SCR dot. So really looking, kind of miss this one. If it does pull back to the $55 to $50 range and holds, this could be a very nice add addition to the portfolio. Uh, NNDM, of course, is the one that I believe a lot of folks know, and this is one I'm, I'm actually currently trading and investing in. This thing comes down to the 21 EMA a lot, and if it does, it holds it, the pattern fairly well here. So, um, and looking for, again, 
Uh, not lo not too concerned here, but it's having a little bit of issues staying above ten dollars here. Um, but if we do get a little bit larger proof of concept, um, the CEO of NNDM has said um, they're really not able to uh, fully uh, send out their devices because again, a lot of Labrador uh, Labradors not dogs, laboratories are still closed due to the uh, the pandemic and the virus. So once potentially they get, uh, uh, things get rolled back and things start go back to somewhat normal, we could see a high growth in this again. This is the, ARC believes the lead uh, on 3D printing with electronic uh, devices. Again, um, with high PEDs performance, again, they're able to make these circuit boards uh, via 3D printers. All right, we got two more left. The last second to last one is BEME. This is a based editing company based on both Tuesday and Fridays on the trend of, I guess, CRISPR stocks. Again, when when the overall tide moves in a certain section, again, it could be uh, EVs, it could be CRISPR genomic stuff, it could be in pff, banks or whatever, a boring uh, other we could be looking at, but looking for this potentially to uh, raise the tide up again. You're going to see this chart basically kind of mimic what we just saw with multiple other of the genomic stuff really hitting that 21 MA and making that aggressive cup handle up. Really, really a lot of really extension here. This thing got up up to nearly 120 bucks, but they kind of gave it back a uh, majority of the day. This thing was up well over 10%, but it's only up 3%. So really a little bit of hype train here looking for a potentially resistance or uh, short-term support around $92 and even some stronger support around 83 or the 21 EMA. If this trend wants to hold again, holding that 21 to 34 EMA, we're looking for $141. Last but not least, we're going to be looking at SRPT, and this is a preci precision medical company. It closed down nearly 50% on Friday after announcing its phase one study, uh, blah, 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 DMD is not met its primary endpoint to improve the MSAA total score uh, Basically, a company and several other uh, products for SDM and doing gene editing for RNA and other investing tales lab gating merch, blah, 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 blah. So, this is what happens when things don't go your way um, and really see uh, a sharp pullback in the stocks here. Again, this is absolutely insane. Again, it got a 50% cut. Like, this is. Uh, it's all the way down to $80 now. Um, this is again, this was a $180 stock just the, the end of last year. And it's really kind of gave it all back because of a failed study. Like this is the game that you play when you're investing in early stage pharmaceutical companies that are really betting on two or three trials. And if one doesn't go one way, that really can cut into the revenue. Um, looking there on a very much on a yearly time frame, we're talking about this is the all time lows even going back uh, just into last year. So this is again, I do not want to be jumping out and just buying this hand over fist. Maybe uh, this is not my favorite kind of candle at all because usually one large red candle like this and it happened on a Friday, I, I really don't want to be touching this with a 10 foot pole. This could last over three or four days on continuous selling because you can see here on some red days here as well. It just takes a little bit longer to kind of get the everyone flushed out with that. Um, anyways, so with that, that being said, I hope everyone, this was a little bit enjoyable. I know it was a lot of rambling, a lot of reading of pharmaceutical stuff, which I, again, I have no knowledge about. I'm not a doctor or any genomic editing expert at all. I, I just love stocks, love charting, love the technical side of things and looking at those momentum growth stocks to potentially uh, gain a nice little percentage back. But again, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe on the way out the door. And as well, don't forget about those two fantastic links between Audible and the TastyWorks account. All right, guys, thank you very much. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.